like it's any rear. So today is my monthly pick up. No, not monthly pickups. Monthly favorites. Get it right, Alyssa. And yes, I know my hair is wet, but I don't care. <laughs> wet hair don't care. Okay. Getting past that part, let's just go into my monthly favorites. I've had a few TV shows I've really loved this month. As probably most of you know, The Walking Dead ended at the, be at the beginning of this month, if I can talk. And it was so intense, and it was just such a shocking ending, and I was genuinely upset by the ending in a good way. But I was just like, oh my god, why? I'm not going to spoil it, just in case you haven't seen it yet. And also, Nikita, if you have not seen the show, it's amazing. It's about this woman named Nikita, and she worked, used to work for this shady government agency called Division. And then she's trying to bring it down, and this is his very last season, and there's only six episodes this season. And so far, four episodes have been shown, so there's only two left, and I'm super bummed because it's an excellent show. And, I mean, if you like action shows and, like, espionage shows, then definitely check out Nikita. And also, I really enjoyed the Bonnie and Clyde miniseries that was on TV. I just thought it was excellent, and it was really interesting to learn about Bonnie and Clyde because I haven't watched the original movie, and I... I knew it was a real story, but I hadn't really read up on it a lot. So it's interesting to see what happened. I'm sure they fabricated some things in the miniseries, obviously, because that's what they do. But overall, I really, really enjoyed the Bonnie and Clyde miniseries. So check it out if you haven't checked it out already. Moving on to movies. There were several movies I liked this month. First off, there was Disconnect, which is a movie about... It kind of seems like it's just vignettes of different characters, like how their relationships are, you know, tested by technology, whether it's positively or negatively. And it's just interesting to see these different individuals' lives af be affected by technology. And in the end, they all come together. And it's just such a powerful, moving movie. And it's just phenomenal. And I know a lot of people haven't heard about it. It didn't have a wide theatrical release. But it's simply wonderful. I mean, if you like vignette-style movies and, you know movies about emotional, you know, what affects emotions and just, it just reaches really deep and makes you think. So definitely check it out. And plus it's got Alexander Skarsgård in it, who you probably know I'm obsessed with. But it also has Jason Bateman, Paula Patton, and Colin Ford in it. So they're all excellent. Check it out. Also, I love Star Trek Into Darkness. I'm sure this one doesn't need a lot of explanation. It's a sequel to the rebooted Star Trek, and I'm a Trekkie, so uh, of course I loved it. A lot of people just complained that it was Wrath of Khan 1.5 or whatever, but, you know, I liked this movie. It was good. And also, I really liked the movie The To-Do List, which is, people have said it's kind of like a female version of Superbad, which I was not a fan of Superbad. I know. Shame on me. But it's about this girl who has just graduated from high school, and before college, she wants to, you know, lose her virginity. <laughs> and she makes a list of everything she wants to do. And it's a really raunchy movie, but it's heartfelt, too. And it's humorous at the same time. And it's just, it's got a lot of celebrities in it. Aubrey Plaza, Bill Hader, Connie Britton, Clark Gregg, uh, Andy Samberg, Johnny Simmons, so many different people. And they all just come together beautifully. And there's a lot of chemistry between all of the actors and... You know, it is a raunchy movie, and it is about a topic that a lot of people don't like to talk about, but it's very heartwarming, and it does really kind of make you think about sex and how that affects people. And another movie I really, really loved, and this is the last movie, is Now You See Me. And this has Jesse Eisenberg, Isla Fisher, Woody Harrelson, who is phenomenal, Dave Franco, Mark Ruffalo, and Morgan Freeman. And it's about these four magicians who go by the four horsemen and they are robbing banks but they don't get the money from themselves they give it away to people who have been duped by insurance companies and all that stuff and it's just a really good movie there's a lot of stunts a lot of magic tricks and it's just very very compelling fun to watch and it goes by in a flash and it's just fantastic so check out now you see me I do have one beauty product on the list this month, which you're probably, some of the girls are probably going, yay, a beauty product. There's Wonderstruck by Taylor Swift Lotion, and it's the same scent as the perfume, but here where I live, in the winter, the highest it gets is maybe 50 degrees, and it can go down into the teens, so 
there's a lot of dry skin going on in this state. So, and this is a really nourishing lotion. It just smells so good. I love it. And it's just, the bottle's pretty too. And it just softens your skin up, makes you smell great. And that's what I love. And it's just a winter essential. And now moving on to the games, which are my favorite part. And they might be yours. I don't know. Just let me grab them real quick. I don't know what that was. I'm, I was acting like a baby goat or something. But first off, as you probably know, but my not, I bought a DS this month, a 3DS this month, and I, was, I absolutely, absolutely love it. And, you know, my parents kind of got on to me for getting this, but I've been obsessed with this thing. I play it every day, and it's just so nifty. I love it. I love the 3D effects. I love the games on it, and, you know, I've already got several friends on this because a lot of my friends have 3DSs, and I just now got one. But I did buy several games for it, which, first off, this is a, actually a DS game, but I never got to play it. It's 999, 9 hours, 9 person signed doors. Of course, GameStop didn't have a case for it, so I'm going to have to make a custom case for it. But it's kind of like a visual novel style game. I just dropped it. No! Okay, <laughs> it's back. It's a visual novel type of game, but you're also doing puzzles, and it's kind of like Saw, the movie Saw, and how you're trapped in rooms and you have to figure these puzzles out to escape. And it's just a group of strangers that are trapped on this boat and they get separated into groups and then there's six different endings. I haven't completed the game yet, but I'm really enjoying it. And it is very chatty, so if you don't like story-driven games, this is not a game for you, but it is very compelling and I really, really enjoy it so far. And next up is Animal Crossing New Leaf which was in my top 10 favorite games of 2000, 2013 but it's just so addictive I mean every day you just want to go to your town and check up on the residents see how they're doing you know make down payments on your house or you know donate to your public work project or you know dig up fossils or you know shop or whatever there's just so much to do in this game it's just so cute and adorable and there's just so much stuff to do in it. I think I already said that, but it's just so addictive and it's very casual. I mean, it's nothing that's going to make you angry or anything like that. It's just a soothing game to play and it's just so cute. And also, I really, really love The Legend of Zelda A Link Between Worlds. This is my first Zelda game and I absolutely... I can't say absolutely today, but I loved it. And... It was more difficult than I thought it would be, but I appreciate the challenge. And I like they they added the new mechanic of you being able to... You're, you can become a painting and travel along the walls. And I know this is the sequel to A Link to the Past, and they reused a lot of the dungeons and enemies. But they told, they've told a new story with this, and there's new mechanics, obviously. And the 3D is amazing in this game. And I can't highly recommend it enough. If you're a Zelda fan, or if you like action-adventure games and you have a 3DS, you definitely need to buy this because this is a must-have for 3DS owners. And the last... Oh, there's two more games. I was supposed to say the last game. But let's just go with... On PlayStation 3, I've really been loving Val Valkyria Chronicles. Why can I not talk today? I'm too excited. But I, I wasn't sure if I liked this, but it's really, really good so far. It's gorgeous. It's got a great story. It's like a JRPG mixed with in RTS and it's not too difficult I mean you have to like so far I've had to replay several battles because you know I didn't think far enough ahead I didn't strategize well enough but once you get a strategy down then you're golden and it's just so compelling and it's set during the war and it's just a beautiful game beautiful story and it's so underrated and I'm so sad that the sequel to this game was only available on PSP and in Japan and if you haven't played this game, definitely play it, especially if you like RPGs and strategy, tactical kind of games. And the last game, which I've been gushing about for forever now, and you're probably like, shut up about this game, Alyssa, but it's Tales of Vesperia, and I love it. And two of my really good friends, Erica and Charlie, recommend this to me, and I love it. It's, I'm about 25 hours into it. I know, I'm still not finished with it, but 
It's just so great. The story is amazing. It's a beautiful game. It looks like you're watching an anime, and I love all the characters. I love Yuri, Estelle, Rita, Judith, Carol, Raven. You know, I love all of them. And there's so many shocking plot twists, and you never know where the story is going to go. And yes, there is grinding in this game, because when you travel between worlds, you do get monsters that will just randomly pop out of nowhere and you have to fight them, but it helps you level up and you get really cool items when you do that. And to me it's not really a chore because I enjoy it so much. And I mean you learn new combos and you learn new arts and you know it's just really fun to play and I love the story and I just love everything about this. The localization is amazing. They did a terrific job with the voiceover and the subtitle work job thingy my bar. <laughs> Whatever, but it's a great game. If you have not played a Tales game, I recommend picking Tales of Vesperia up. It's a 360 exclusive, sadly, unless you get it from Japan, which they have it on PS3 in Japan, but then you have to have a Japanese PS3 or one that's compatible with Japanese games. But if you want to get it at the US, in the US or anywhere else, it's only Xbox 360. And I know that's kind of disappointing, but it's such a good game though. I mean, if you have a 360 and you like RPGs, definitely pick up Tales of Vesperia. Now, it's on to my favorite YouTubers of the month! Which I love to just tell you who my favorite YouTubers are because they're amazing people and they deserve more viewers or whatever. And they put a lot of hard work into their videos. So first off, I have to give a shout out to my girl, Jurassic. And I just recently started talking to her about, I think last month? You can correct me if I'm wrong, Charlie. But she's so sweet, and she does these just amazing videos. She does, like, her favorite 360 and PS3 games. She does her pickup videos. She does just, um, well, she does, like, ch random chatter videos, like, where she'll talk about a certain game. Hometown Story was her latest, and she'll update you on her summer backlog, and she's just the sweetest, sweetest girl ever. I adore her. And why am I calling her a girl? She's older than me. But <laughs> you get my drift. She's just so sweet, and she's so bubbly, and I just want to hug her. And I wish she didn't live so far away, but Jurassic's going to be up here above my head. And over here on my left shoulder will be Nostalgic Dan 1. He is a super cool guy. He's really into RPGs. And he's really into art, and he's such a talented artist. He has his own website, and his videos are great. He's just got this amazing speaking voice and this just mannerism that is just great. He's so friendly, too. I mean, he's been really supportive of me. And his videos are just so much fun to watch. He puts so much detail, and just he just goes into each game, and he explains this part and this part, and... When he does his unboxings of collector's editions, which he always gets these games that are, like, really rare or people real haven't heard about them a lot. And he gets these collect the collector's editions and unboxes them. And they're always super cool. And I'm always like, oh, damn, I'm so jealous of you. But he's just a really sweet guy. So check out Nostalgic Dan 1. His channel's over here, like I said. On my right shoulder is Ari Lewis 2011. Rusty is super sweet. Oh, my gosh, that boy. I just want to give him a hug. He does video game videos also, which I think every YouTuber I'm going to mention does video games. But he's just awesome. And he does a lot of like collection videos and his favorite games and all that stuff. And he's just su such a super sweet guy. I mean, he never has a bad thing to say about anyone. And his videos are just so much fun to watch. So check out Rusty, Ari Lewis, 2011. Down near the bottom under Nostalgic Dan 1 will be Hell Destroyer 77. He's a really cool guy. He does like monthly pickup videos. He does unboxings of collector's editions and gaming stuff he gets. And he also tells stories like Best Buy horror stories or, you know, just these different things. And he's just a little fun to watch. And he's got this uh, just awesome personality. And I just love how fired up he gets about games and I, I totally get his drift like he is very particular about his games if they're damaged he gets really upset and that's me too I, I identify with you but <laughs> he's really awesome though you should check him out if you like to watch unboxings and you know click 
reaction videos and all this different kind of gaming related video stuff, just check out Hell Destroyer 77. And the last person that I'm going to mention in this, my favorite YouTuber section, is actually not a gamer. I lied about that before. But it's Taryn Southern, which she's amazing. She's got over 200,000 subscribers, but she does music videos. She does just these hilarious videos. She's worked with Look TV and did my domain videos where she went to Olga K, Daystorm, Powers House, Davey Wavy's house, Brittany Louie's, Taylor's house. And she's also been in a few TV shows and movies and she's reported on red carpets and stuff. And she's just, she's sweet too. And she's just super funny, super gorgeous. So give Taryn some love down here. And of course, all my favorite music, which there's a ton of it this month. I know there were a ton of songs last month, but this month there's a ton too. I'm sorry, but check them out please because I love them. I put a lot of work into putting them into the playlist and they just deserve to be listened to and watched. So there's going to be all my favorite songs in the description box down below. You just have to open it up and I have links to all the music videos. Let me know what you think about the songs. And that's the my favorite things this month in December. And I'm just super excited. I know this video is early like the past few months have been. But I decided to post this early because of Christmas. And just because, you know, I'm, I'm impatient. So if you liked the video, click the like button. Remember to subscribe for more epic videos of epic geekiness. Comment down below. Just tell me what your favorites were this month or whatever. And favorites that your friends and family can see. Share me if you want to. And just remember, I love each and every one of you. Have a great holiday, whatever you celebrate. And just, you know, be the awesome people that you are. Peace and kisses. Bye.